Verses 18 and 19. First Samuel 16, 18 and 19. Praise the Lord. Amen. First Samuel 16, 18 and 19. One of the servants answered, I have a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lies. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and he is a man and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. Praise the Lord. Understand by this passage, uh, three brothers, two sisters. Very quickly. I want to show you this around the ring with the mic. Glory. Praise the Lord. Um, the lessons are. Uh, uh, I got from this passage. Uh, I, I found out that God wants us to be worshippers like David, in spirit and in truth. He is gifted with the instruments, for instance, for worshiping God. And in one of those instruments is such that he draws God to to himself. Another lesson is that God wants us to be diligent like David. His testimony of that passage was like. He is a shepherd boy. He can be predicted by his location. He was tending to the sheep, doing his father's work. So God wants us to do our father's will. In conclusion, the Bible says, see a man diligent in his work. He's not going to stand without, before just stand before kings. If we're diligent and we use our gift, the gift the Lord has given unto us, we will not just stand before me and men, but in front of kings. Then answered one of them, as answered one of them unto the same. And so then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I've seen a Jesse. I've seen of a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is running a plain and a mighty gallant man, and a man of war and prudent in matters and public person. And he has been taking cognizance of him. So, what I can derive from that passage, the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 16, says, In the gift of man, you make room for him. So according to that passage, David's gift made room for him. He was brought to the palace. Good. Good. What I understood in this passage is that you could be a brave man. You could know how to play instrument. You could, you could be a good looking man. But when the Lord is not with you, all that is uh, will be useless. David was actually located even with all this talent because the Lord was with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 17 before 18 says, So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. Whatever we are doing, let us do it well to the glory of God. And wherever we are, we should be committed to whatever we are doing, not with eye service, as we do. The Almighty God will always arrange someone who will announce us in the palace. We will not miss our, announcement, our divine announcement in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. During the time of David's loneliness, he was able to acquire skills. He did not allow that time to pass away or to be wasted. He used the time to understand so many things. And with these gifts, his gifts found him out. And the lesson to each and every one of us is that wherever we are, whatever gifts that we have, we should use it to glorify the name of the Lord because God himself will find us out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're in lockdown, just kidding. Yes, sir. I discovered that um, after David was anointed, he went back to the ship. He went back to his flock. Commitment to seemingly insignificant assignments mm. is a, a short pathway to significance and excellence. Mm. Um, I read several years ago a quotation by Martin Luther King Jr. He said, if a man is called to be a, sweep, a street sweeper, he should sweep street even as a Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep street so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. When we do our job well and we something that looks insignificant, somewhere along the line, we will get to the point of significance and excellence. Mm -hmm. That's <clears throat> gives us a good report of David while he was alone with the sheep. There's a tendency to behave anyhow when you are alone. Because don't know that somebody is there with you who sees all things which is and we cannot hide from him but the question here is that a good report was given about David while he was alone what are the reports people can give about you even while you are not alone and how much more of when you are alone this is telling us that uh, God is a record keeper. He knows all things and he sees all things. I pray through this testimony given to David about David, we will caution ourselves and begin to do good even while we are alone. Because later or sooner, <coughs> the Lord who sees us in secret, he will reward us in the open. Amen. God bless us. Amen. I'm not surprised that there are so many beautiful contributions already. But that the passage is uh, loaded. I, I hope you will note uh, some of the points that have been raised. Don't waste your period of loneliness. The best products are made in the workshop before they come to the showroom. It is what is done in the workshop that will be revealed in the showroom. There are people who have asked, who have asked us how do you organize everything like clockwork when you are hosting millions of people? The answer to them is we did not start today. The first Congress we had in Elysia in 19. 77. 
total attendance was less than 3,000 people. We learned from the mistakes of those days. Because uh, I was uh, over, happy that it was over. <laughs> now, because of lessons we learned over the years, we can now have the Congress, we can now have the Convention, millions can attend. At the end of it, I won't be ragged because we have learned along the line. If we don't learn now that you are relatively unknown, it's not even likely you will ever be known. If there is failure in the workshop, you won't get to the showroom. That's important. I hope you will also take note of that quotation if you are called to be a sweeper. Sweep so well, you will be in the same class as the best painter, the best musician, who clean. In those days, the meaning is that if you had swept a floor, Food can drop down there and you can pick it up and eat. As a meaning of clean. That should be our target in life. And I used to tell my children then that when I was at the University of Nigeria, Onsuka, and I was staying with my uncle, who was just a drummer. He always wanted me to shine his shoes. Because when I finish shining the shoes, you can see your image in it. And he will be boasting to his colleagues. As an undergraduate shines my shoes. Whatever you do, do it so excellently that it will attract the attention of heaven. That's very important. Don't forget all these points. All, all the points that have been made, uh, great. That your gifts will make a way for you. If you are diligent, you won't stand before ordinary men. You will end up standing before kings, etc., etc. That the God who sees in secret will reward you in the open. If you do your best only when your boss is present. And as soon as he's gone, you do what you like. One day it will show. Because sooner or later, you are likely to become your own boss. And the way you'll be handling things when you are not being supervised is the way you'll be handling things when you are your own boss. But then the point I want to make, which somebody also made earlier on, is that yes, David was a musician. Yes, he was mightily valiant. Yes, he was a warrior. Yes, he was prudent. He's, he speaks with wisdom. And yes, he was handsome. But his greatest asset was that God was with him. If only God can be with me.
then heaven will be my limit. God was with shepherd boy. And thousands of years after he died, a beggar can call on the Lord Jesus Christ and call him thou son of David. Not thou son of Saul. We know the implication of the Lord was with him. Not man. Not man was with him. But God was with him. Why? Psalm 16, verse 11. First Samuel chapter 26, from verse 1 to 25. First Samuel 26, from verse 1 to 25. Whereas, according to Psalm 121, from verse 3 to 5, Psalm 121, from verse 3 to 5. If God is with you, you have a bodyguard who neither sleeps nor slumber. He has represent dangerous friends who want to destroy you by embracing you. The Lord called them in Matthew 7, verse 15, Matthew 7, verse 15, he calls them wolves in sheep clothing. Enemies that are known are fairly easy to deal with. The elders in Africa have a proverb. When God has shown you your enemy, he shouldn't be able to kill you. What do you do when you are dealing with an enemy who pretends to be a friend? It's one philosopher, very dangerous one, who once said, the greatest joy when you are able to deceive your enemy to rely on you completely and then you drive a dagger through his heart that was philosophy but if the Lord is with me I can defeat this if the Lord is with me, I can defeat Goliath. Psalm 17, 45 to 51. Psalm 17, 45 to 51. David said to Goliath, You come with you come against me with all your armors. I come against you in the name of the Lord. At the end of the quarrel or the fight. The head of Goliath was standing or was being lifted up by the hand of David. Now, defeating Goliath means if the Lord is with me, I can move any mountain between me and my destiny. Why? In 1 Samuel 16, from verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, 11 to 13, David has been anointed to be king over Israel. When 
Goliath came on the scene, he said, send me a man to fight. If he defeats me, the Philistines will become your slaves. If I defeat him, Israel will become our slaves. What Goliath was after was to take away the kingdom of Israel before David can become king. It was a mountain between David and his destiny. If God is with me, any mountain between me and my destiny, I can deal with. After all, in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 23, Mark 11, 22 to 23, it is written that if you have faith in God, you can speak to mountains, mountains will move. If God is with me, uh, I hope you are numbering them. If, if God is with me, number one, I can defeat lions. If God is with me, number two, I can defeat bears. Number three, if God is with me, I can defeat Goliath. Number four, if God is with me, I can defeat the fear of death. Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and we fear no evil, for thou art with me. Number five, if God is with me, I can defeat sorrow, I can defeat depression. Because Psalm 16, verse 11, Psalm 16, verse 11 says, In his presence there is the fullness of joy. If God is with me, number six, I can defeat even the world. The whole world is against me, and God is with me, I win. Why? First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Made it clear. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you can find an example. In First King chapter eighteen, First King chapter eighteen, I read it from verse one to forty. Elijah was alone with God. The whole nation of Israel was on the other side. He won. At the time the contest was over, the whole nation was on the floor, shouting over his Lord. And I've said it before, in a at least in a boxing uh, contest, the man who remains standing after the contest is the champion. Number seven, if God is with me, I can defeat hopelessness. Mm. Colossians 1 27. Colossians 1 27. Christ in me, 
ਤੇ ਉਹ ਪਾਉ ਕਲਾਰੇ ਦੇ ਕੰਕਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਆਫ ਆਈਸ ਦਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਾਸ ਥਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਕੈਨ ਹੈਪਨ ਟੂ ਐਨੀ ਮੈਨ ਇਸ ਫੋਰ ਗੋਡ ਟੂ ਡਿਪਾਰਟ ਫਰਮ ਦੇ ਪਰਸਨ was that has got up to anybody if you are something it will tell you when god was with him he could tell a liar into two when god was with him he cannot be kept prisoner by the gate of a city they have protected it when god was with him with the job born of anas he killed a thousand of his enemies and the rest fled but in judges 16 from verse 18 to 21 judges 16 18 to 21 when god departed from him he became an easy prey for the enemy oh you can ask king so who story were dealing with here in four seven sixteen verse fourteen thank you for your grace thank you, thank you because it is of your mercy we are not consumed thank you, thank you because that mercy is new every morning Amen. thank you for the grace please accept our thanks in Jesus name ancient of days if there is any of us here that you have forsaken because of one thing or the other that they did we are all in one accord this morning as we beg and say Father please forgive Amen let there be restoration today Amen and we pray for those of us who by your grace are still standing that we will never fall Amen that whatever we can do that will cause you to say bye bye to us Lord please Lord don't let us ever do it and we pray Lord God Almighty that if you know since you need Father take us away we don't want to live without you please help us in the end and all over the world today please send help to your children have mercy on all of us. Amen. And Lord God Almighty, destroy this pandemic completely. Amen. Let the rest of our lives be glorious. Amen. And help us to serve you to the end. Amen. Mighty men, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning.